some time ago, I bought this hybrid Panther router from Kurib, and uh, I decided to put there instead of traditional router, uh, CNC spindle motor. And at today's video, I will explain what was the reason for this solution, uh, what is the advantage, what is the downside, and how I am happy with it after a few months of the usage. So, first of all, what is the reason why I decided to go in this way? So, there are basically two reasons. First is that I'm from the Europe, being on 220 volts, and there are not too many options which router you can use, especially if you want still to use half-inch collet for the, for the router bits. And the second and the main reason is that these CNC spindle motors, they are brushless motor, and this version is water-cooled, so they are extremely silent comparing to the traditional router. So it also helps to decrease the noise. And now let's have a look what does it mean to install such type of the router or motor and what modif modification were needed. So the router consists of three basic elements. So the first is the motor itself. Second is what's called VFD controller, which basically controls the, the motor and by changing the frequency, it enables to change the speed of the rotation. And for water-cooled version, you also need certain cooling liquid, and you also need the pump, which is inside the box, which you can see here. And of course, you need certain pipes, which, uh, which uh, transport uh, the cooling liquid in the motor. The next step is that you need to fit this uh, motor to the Panther router. Uh, the standard diameter is, I think, 89 mm if I remember, and the diameter of the motor is 80 mm. Yeah. So there is 9 mm difference, and you need to put certain spacers uh, which will fill the gap. Yeah. So in my case, I have used such type of the plastic, uh, plastic pipe, and uh, the advantage is that uh, the thickness of the wall is pretty consistent, yeah? so it will really ensure that uh, the, mo the motor mm, remains uh, in the center. Uh, you need to calculate uh, what is the thickness of the wall, then you need to put several, several pipes, uh, and usually the last one you need to a bit adjust the thickness of the wall, uh, because uh, the total total thickness needs to be pretty precise in order to fit that. Uh, the question is how to change the thickness of the wall if, for example, you need to remove uh, 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters, like in, in my case. So I've tried several ways, like certain sending paper and file and so on, but they didn't work too much. So finally, what worked the best is just to take the chisel and just to scrap it like in this way. You can keep it like this and evenly scrap it around. And uh, just to check what, uh, what what is a change and to make it again, and finally with certain sanding paper to make it a bit smooth. Yeah. So in this way, uh, it it ensures that you are removing quite consistently the material around, and uh, you will fit there. This method works quite well. So before, because I was waiting a bit for this motor, so in first. Uh, weeks I was even using this small Makita router what is a diameter 65 millimeters and I was able to make a spacer even for such a big gap so here you can see basically I have used all type of pipes which I have available and I put all together then I also use this metal just to to have something very thin and even in this way, it uh, it works quite well, and the router was well well centered in in the collet. But, but one comment to the to the motor, I have used two point two kilowatts motor. I think it's not necessary. I think one point five would be enough. But the reason is that for 
smaller motors, you will not have this collet, which is half inch size. Yeah, so this is the reason if you want to have a half inch size collet, you need to take this 2.2. One aspect of this solution is that this motor is more heavy comparing to the normal router. Uh, this is about five kilograms. And the impact is that these springs are not strong enough. So it does not stay in the neutral position, but it just go down. Yeah. So you can still use it, but you need to use certain power to keep it up and it's not very comfortable. Yeah. So I have used certain temporary solution, but it works so great that I will probably use it forever <laughs> that I have used certain like a flexible rope here made out of the gum and I put several loops here and it basically increased the, the force of the spring and here you can see that now it stay in any position yeah. and the big advantage is that you can fine tune the force in very accurate way, so you can really set up the force exactly as you as you need. Next specific is that uh, the head of the router is a bit longer comparing to the normal one. So if you are using this dust collection, it does not fit there. But you can easily solve it that you will just put uh, certain spaces here. And then this dust collection will move forward and now it fit correctly. Next point is that uh, in order to release and tighten this collet, uh, you need the second, second wrench and you need to get in. So there is like no button like in normal routers. But fortunately, there is, there is not too much space, but there is still space to get there. And uh, I think it's an advantage to have such thin branch. Yeah, so this is, for example, for the bicycle. And uh, this such range you can get there. You can fit it. And he now you can, you can release it or tighten as you, as you need. And finally, you can see here certain, it's like a computer cooler. Uh, the reason is that uh, indeed this router does not have any light, <laughs> but I think it's a big advantage if you have certain light here, if you are working. So I was looking on the market what is available and uh, I have found such type of the, it's like LED, very, very small LED, uh, LED light. It's about three watts. And uh, the advantage is that it works directly on 220 volts, yeah, so you don't need any like trans transformer between. Uh, but when I try to use it, uh, it generates a lot of heat, and I was really afraid that it will burn out. Yeah. So I put it on this cooler, I glue it through the hot gun here, and I just fix it again temporarily in this way, but works fine so I ju I'm just keeping like it is yeah. and it works quite fine because it's uh, pretty strong uh, light so it's more than enough yeah. so you can see that uh, the, the light is well distributed yeah. and here also you can see how how the connection is done yeah. so I have two switches they are in the series so the first one is switching the water pump, so I will ensure that the water pump is running all the time when the motor is up, because otherwise uh, without cooling it can get damaged. Yeah. And it also switches this controller and it also switches this, uh, this light here. And then there is the second switch, uh, finally. I think it's not needed because I have it on all the time because there is another switch here where you really start the motor itself. <coughs> okay, and now I think that we can have a look uh, what is the level of noise which is generated by this motor if it's running like without without touching the material. Yeah. So I will switch on. Yeah. So this is what you can hear now is the pump, which is almost as noisy as the motor itself. Yeah. 
So it needs several seconds when the controller is up. And now it's a time that we can, we can start it. So I have a startup time about 5 or 6 seconds. And now you can see it's running 24,000 uh, speed. And I think that you can still hear me quite well. What would definitely not be the case when I run on the speed of normal router. So you can see that it's really very, very silent. And for example, the dust collection is much more noisy than, than this motor. What is the downside of this solution? Uh, first of all, it's a bit more complex, so you need this controller, you need this water cooling, so you need some stand. And uh, so, for example, someone who wants to move it from time to time, it's not so easy. Eh? So within the workshop, that's fine, but to move it outside, it will be a bit more challenging. Another small issue is uh, what I mentioned at the beginning, that the head of the router is a bit longer comparing to the normal one. Yeah. So if you need to work with some thicker material, so as an example, I needed to make this hole and it's five centimeters thick. Yeah. So I put it, I put it like here and this is five centimeter router so exactly for this purpose and uh, if i move it backward you can see that there is still like a two millimeters overlay yeah so there is not enough space so you need somehow to work around so either you need to drill some leading hole or you need to use the shorter bit yeah so this is quite small disadvantage but uh, worth to mention so if i summarize uh, I'm quite happy with the solution. Yeah, so power, there is more than enough power. There is no issue with the cooling at all. So it really, if it run 15, 20 minutes, no issue at all. And especially this noise, it's really, for me, it's quite big, big advantage. Yeah. And also you have all the flexibility with this, uh, with this collet up to the half inch. And uh, the water cooling itself, uh, once you install it, uh, then you almost don't know about it. Yeah, If you put some cooling liquid, you don't even have an issue with a freeze. So you can use the normal cooling liquid, which is used in the car. Yeah, So I, I, I can really recommend it as an as a alternative to the normal routers. Yeah. Okay, and some experience with the Panther router itself. So here I prepared some uh, different uh, shape of the template. So you can see it here. And with this type of the template, you can create, for example, just such type of the joinery. So this is quite big. So it's a 16 millimeter thick and 65 millimeter long so this is probably the maximum what, what can be done but but can be done quite well yeah. then i had a project where i had to create uh, many holes with different diameter but uh, quite accurate uh, diameters so for this one i created such type of the templates you can see it here the difference is 20 millimeters, so the step is 20 millimeters. And with such templates, and if you have enough like uh, these followers, so here you can see like uh, all the set which I have. So with this setup, you can make basically any hole with any diameter which, which you need. Yeah. So it's a bit work to prepare all these, but I think it's worse because then you have really all the flexibility which 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 you need. Yeah. And one small final tip: if you are working in the vertical position, so something like this. Yeah. So you know that here you can very easily 
make the setup. Uh, so, for example, if you need to make a certain shape in the center of this material, you just put it here, and in this way, you can you can make a setup, and it will automatically be in the center of this material. Yeah. But if it's vertically, uh, the base will move down a bit, and the difference is exactly 51 millimeters. Yeah. So if you make such piece of the wood with 51 millimeter thickness, you will put it here. Then you can use also this uh, this like utility for the measurement, also for the vertical position. Very last tip: uh, if you are working in vertical position. You can clamp the material with such type of the clamp because it will interfere with the with the router here. So you need to fit fit it from the from the downside, and uh, for this it's a good to make such clamps and make them shorter, so they will just fit here. And then you can easily turn it, and it will not touch this base. Yeah. So it's a small tip, but for me it's very useful.